a very interesting thing happened the other day and a couple from the United States reached out to me through email after they saw one of the videos they are kind of thinking about moving to the Azores so we started emailing a bit back and forth and they told me that they already know that it's like a paradise and it's known because of sustainability and hot springs and beautiful nature all this like ocean life and good food and there was this very particular question at the end of the email what are the worst things about the Azores and I was like wow that's a really nice question because if we travel for vacation we don't really want to see the bad things I mean we don't even really have time to see the bad things first we are gonna talk about things which are the most annoying for tourists and then we are just gonna look at it from a perspective of living here Number one, you almost always have to fly to Portugal mainland first. From many countries there are no direct flights, but the flight schedule, as everywhere else in the world, changes depending on winter and summer seasons. Now it's July 2022, right now you can get here directly from Paris, London, Manchester, Boston and Toronto, New York, Barcelona, and I don't know a few other cities outside of Portugal. Then another problem, especially in summer, is that there are no cars to rent. Sometimes literally none. And I know that some people prefer private guides or hiring a taxi and in that case that's okay. But if you want to rent a car, try to book the car right after you book your flight tickets, especially if you're coming in summer like from May until October. Yeah, this thing with renting a car is not a joke in summer and I saw it last summer and I'm seeing the same thing this summer. Some people are solving this issue by combining buses and private drivers and taxis and I mean, yeah, it's possible to solve it. It also works, you just won't have that much freedom. And one more advice for visitors who are renting cars always check the marks on the car before you sign the contract take pictures of the car of the scratches it's rental cars and people don't take care of the car they get scratched and the roads on some parts of the island are very tiny it's good to take pictures of the car because once you return the car and the company finds new scratches which might have been there even when you took the car, they will hold you responsible, even if you are not responsible for it. And if you don't have the right insurance, you might be forced to pay for the damages. The next thing is the weather. A lot of people tend to complain about the weather, even though you cannot really do much with the weather. And many times I get asked what the weather will be like when somebody's coming, like in a certain date range. And the thing is that you never know. The good thing is that it's never too hot or never too cold, but the exact temperature nobody really knows. It changes a lot. There is a different weather on the south and there is a different weather on the north. The best is to check the app they have and just to see the cameras. And then another thing is whether it is necessary to book hotels and restaurants in advance in summer. And yes, it is. In summer, yes even restaurants and hotels yes the next point would be traveling between islands it's easy but it's actually not that easy so the best option is to fly and as far as i know the only airline which offers inter-island flights is azores airlines and to get to most of the islands you would have to take a flight from sao miguel first also, in my opinion, the flights are quite expensive. Then about ferries, it is not hard to travel around between islands which belong to the same group of islands. For example, if you want to travel from Sao George to Pico or Flores to Corvo. But as far as I know, there are no ferries from Sao Miguel to Corvo, for example. Previously, I used the company, I think it was something uh, like Atlantical Lines or Atlantic Lines, but I'm going to double check their website and I'm just gonna put it to the description so you can see the details and routes. Then another thing is the local roads and infrastructure. infrastructure. It's 
true that the roads in the villages might get very tiny but on the other hand there are the highways which are I think more than okay the lizards and cockroaches and yes you are very likely to see both and actually much more like any different kinds of insects and there are lizards everywhere and you can expect to see cockroaches and sometimes you will find them inside the Airbnb but good hotels and Airbnbs usually call these companies who deal with cockroaches so like they come from the company and spray the house against the cockroaches like every two three months with the cockroaches I feel like I saw them the most during fall I don't know maybe it's just like a weird coincidence but yeah I have this feeling that I saw them more in like September, October than in March, for example. And they both, like the cockroaches and lizards and other small insects, they move like really fast, so <laughs> yeah. All the things which were mentioned in the video until now were mainly from a perspective of a tourist and these were the things I heard the most that tourists were complaining about. So and now from a bit of a different perspective, from a perspective of living here and a couple of things which might be useful to consider before moving here full time. So if you come here for the very first time, you are going to be amazed and thrilled and excited. But uh, that hype and kind of like wow effect is going to disappear slowly by time and at one point living here is just going to become normal the first thing would be healthcare and it's great here but if you have to undergo some complicated procedures you will have to fly to mainland portugal then a great thing is that if you live in the capital city or like a bigger city you will not necessarily need a car from the very beginning but having one makes everything less complicated. Then number three, in the winter there is no snow, but because of the rain, wind and humidity it might feel a bit colder. And I think a lot of houses do not have a heating system, so during winter it can get a bit chilly during the evenings and the nights. Then mold and humidity. The humidity is high but it also depends on the part of the island where you live. On some parts of the island it's higher and in winter it's really good to have a dehumidifier otherwise the walls get moldy very easily. And even the clothes can get kind of you know wet especially if you leave your clothes folded one on each other and just put them into the wardrobe. I guess it's better to hang them. And now, well, the last one, but it's also a fun one. Getting things delivered might take time and it might be a bit more complicated. Yeah, it will take some time. 